I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! So, everybody, welcome to Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk, where we talk about NHL topics and we gauge them, our confidence in these NHL topics, based on our choice of drink. Are you going to buy everybody around because you're so confident? I mean, you're really not that confident. I need a shot. You're a little bit depressed about it. Or, eh, I'll just have a beer. So, guys, we're going to start with the first one. I meant I alluded to this one in the Rangers preview, but Jesse Pugliarvi of Edmonton is proof that fans need to be patient with Capo Caco. Mr. John Pukowski, start us off. I mean, I get what you're getting at here. I, I'm going to say beer just because I think fans need to be patient with Capo Caco for other reasons, most notably the coach and his usage of him. But I guess if you want to point to an example, I, I, I guess I don't mind using Jesse Pugliarvi. I, I think Pugliarvi has become a good player. I don't think he's ever going to live up to his draft uh, his draft stature, where he was taken. But he still can definitely be a good and very useful NHL player. I, I just think that uh, Capo Caco – his problems were more so from the coaching and the usage of him and the way that the coach wanted to develop him as opposed to developing his offense first and then teaching him defense as they go along. So I'm going to say beer. Uh, I'm going to join you in that. I'm going to say beer too. I would love to say bye everybody around on this, but yes, David Quinn was one of the number one problems with Capo Caco, but it just also shows that, Pooley Arvey's become a better player, and yes, he had hurdles to go through. I think he's 25 now, right? Pooley Arvey, no. No, all right. He's, no, he's a couple he was, years older he, than Kaka, right? Uh, no, no, he, he was the 2016 draft, so they're, they're five years removed, so he's 23. Okay, so there you go. And uh, I probably should have looked that up before I opened up my mouth, but oh well. Uh, but you know something? He's, he's finding his – he's – He's finding his footing now, and uh, the, one of the analysts for the Edmonton Oilers is saying he can imagine this guy being a 40-goal scorer in the league. Now, is that on his own, or is that because he's next to Connor McDavid, which uh, a coat rack can score 40 goals uh, <laughs> with Connor McDavid? So uh, it's uh, – but, but Kako is developing. He's coming into his own 21-year-old kid when January hits, so – Everybody, let's take a breath. This Kako is going to be good, but Pooley Arvey is a good example of it at the same time. So it's just a beer. Anthony. Yeah, beer as well. Um, I mean, different situations with having Pooley Arvey. You know, pool party requested to be traded, and then they didn't really accommodate it for it. He played overseas, came back. Um, and, you know, he's, he's been a better player, but it's not like what they did. He's not like a superstar now all of a sudden. Um, you know, Kako played on, under a piss-poor coach. A um, little bit different scenarios, but, um, you know, both finish. So I get it. Uh, but I mean, but overall, though, I, I you know, I, I get where you're going with it, as Phil mentioned, but beer. All right. So we're going to move on to the next one. And I need to make sure I have my notes on this one that I I took down. But we need the broom icon for that one. <laughs> but. The Rangers' improved face-off numbers will lead to more wins. And I'm going to start it by saying this is what I mean by the face-off numbers. Just the preseason so far, 54% versus the Islanders, 56 versus the Bruins, 53 versus the Devils, 42 at the Bruins. One caveat out of that is they really had only Ryan Strom as their only real center and Morgan Barron as well trying to make the team. Other than that, I mean, there weren't many guys that were taking face-offs. But this is this is the other thing to point out. Mika Zibanejad, notoriously bad at face-offs. 63% versus the Islanders, 58% versus the Devils. Morgan Barron, the three games that he's played, 55, 71, 70, 67. And for everybody that always says face-off numbers are overrated, face-offs equal possessions. The most critical, one of the most critical plays in the last decade for the New York Rangers was off a face-off. So, yes, face-offs translate to wins. Because I'll turn this over to Anthony right now. 
Do the Islanders worry about faceoffs? Of course they do. Those guys win faceoffs. Go ahead. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go beer. Uh, obviously, faceoffs are very important. I think it's an underrated um, stat in the game. People that say it don't matter don't really know the game well. Um, obviously, if you win the faceoff, you have possession of the puck, and if you have possession of the puck, chances are you're doing good things as opposed to not. So, definitely helps, but. Um, being good in the face-off circle doesn't always necessarily mean you're going to win the hockey game and, you know, be this good elite team. So, but no, for sure, it is extremely important. And, you know, if you had to pick, obviously you'd, you'd want to be proficient face-offs rather than not. Um, and it's good to see their improved face-off percentage during the preseason. Hopefully, you know, they continue it during the regular season when they're facing more, you know, NHL centers who are more seasons at it. But, um, overall, uh, beer and it, it the, the the statistic does matter a lot. Um, but I'm not I'm not gonna go ahead and say round though. All right. By the way, I forgot to say I'm buying everybody around. So there it is, right there, Mister John Volkowski. I'm with Anthony. Beer. It's okay. not a, it's not an overrated stat. I, I believe it's becoming a little underrated. It does equal possession, but it doesn't always equal wins because once you get that puck, it's it's a matter of what you do with it and how you handle it from there. So um, it'll help, but it's not a be-all, end-all. So I'm going to say beer. All right. Moving on to going back to the Islanders for a minute. Simeon Varlamov's injury will enable Ilya Sorokin to take over as the team's number one goalie. Go ahead, Mr. Loraco. Uh Beer for sure. I mean, I, I would go round, but I know Trotz loves his veteran so much. So even if Varlamov comes back, he'd definitely give him a chance. But, um, you know, if – Sorokin, you know, starts the first, you know, let's say four or five games of the year because Varlamov's not ready. You know, this is a guy who hasn't played any preseason games yet and missed a lot of training camp. So, um, you know, he'll need a little bit of time. So that's why I could see Sorokin taking the first, you know, three, four or five games. But, um, you know, if he plays really well and he plays up to his potential in those games, uh, you know, and then Varlamov comes back and, you know, doesn't play as good or average, um, you know, points matter early in the year. So I could see Trotz, uh, you know, giving the reins to, to Ilya for a little bit. Um, so this is his chance. You know, the door is open. I know a lot of people were, were saying it might be closer to 50-50 this year in terms of a split. Um, but this is Sorokin's chance to maybe show, you know, he's the guy uh, as soon as this year, uh, which is inevitable. It's definitely going to happen. But some question whether it happens next year. But this could maybe lead to Sorokin playing a little bit more than Varlamov if he earns it. Mr. Fikalxi. I'm going to say beer, but leaning towards shot. And the only reason why I say that is because of the fact that I don't see it yet unless uh, Sorokin absolutely blows them away in net in his absence. So I, I'm, I'm going to say beer here. I, I think it's, it is technically possible, but to me, it's highly unlikely. I'm going to make it a clean sweep, guys, is beer. Uh, as much as I want to use the Wally Pip analogy right here, I can't help but also say it, Trotz is going to be loyal to Varlamov. He was their success story the last two seasons. He went back to Varlamov after he was not very good against Pittsburgh Penguins last year, and Sorokin basically was the reason why they got past the Pittsburgh Penguins. But also, Barry Trotz uses everybody on the roster. That's what Barry Trotz does. And very few guys know, know how to navigate that. He got a Stanley Cup out of Braden Holpe, who didn't start the first few games of the, the playoffs. So, that season. So, I, that's another one you kind of just can't believe. Okay. So, they've been making noise in the preseason. We have to talk about them. But the New Jersey Devils will be the surprise team of the NHL. You know what? I'm going to say beer on this. I think they definitely can be. Uh, there's there's certain factors. That you just look at them and you go, yeah, I'm not sure. Is is Ryan Graves going to be uh, a, a big factor? Uh, <laughs> Phil, Phil will have a good laugh about that one later. Um, the uh, Is Dougie Hamilton going to be able to carry this team? He was a plus 50 as a Carolina Hurricane. I doubt he's going to be a plus 50 as a New Jersey devil, but yeah, I mean, Jack Hughes takes another step. They got good centers over there. They go. He sure Tartar and uh, Hughes. Tartar is a winger. Yeah. 
Oh, I thought he was a I thought he was a center again. No, he's a he's a winger. Okay, well, shouldn't open up my mouth on that one, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, John. I'm gonna say beer because th- th- there are elements there that because this is also a subjective term, surprise team. So that that could be that could be absolutely subjective. New Jersey could, but somebody else could say that another team surprised more than they did. I like their center depth at one, two. I think he was his prime for a breakout. I like the addition of Hamilton. Hamilton's good, but he lacks defensively. And Ryan Graves, I, I don't like him in a top pairing role, especially. And he didn't do good with Cal McCarr. And the drop off defensively from Hamilton to McCarr isn't a big drop off. Hamilton's not that great defensively. So, and the Devil fans are going to see this sooner than later. So. I, I would say that they can. I don't know if they are going to be the surprise team. Can they surprise? Yes. I don't know if they're going to be the biggest surprise, though. So, beer. I really shouldn't have said Tara was a center. <laughs> 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 Anthony? Um, I'm, I mean, they're going to be, they're going to be improved, um, but – I'm actually gonna. I'm actually gonna go shot here. Um, I, I think they're still gonna miss the playoffs. I think quite handily, um, despite being better. But I, for me, I, I think I think Chicago is gonna surprise. I think they're gonna be the surprise team. Um, I mean, they're, I think they're gonna be a lot better of a team. Um, I mean, this is no knock on Jersey. Uh, they are, like I said, they are going to be improved. But to say they're going to be this, the the surprise team in the NHL kind of implies, you know, maybe they make the playoffs or uh, this or that. But I don't really see it yet with them. So, shot. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.